Welcome to Words on the Outside with Laura Bynum. This reading from Against a Brightening Sky, a Historical Fantasy, is read by author Jamie Lee Moyer and is equal parts historical lens, ghost story, and murder mystery. In an age of empires, princes were raised to rule and often to fight and die. That time of soldier kings was over by Armistice Day. Far too many kingdoms had shattered in the Great War, the power of their rulers broken forever. Some kings and princes had gone into exile, saving themselves and their families. Others had simply vanished. The papers were full of their pictures and speculation about whether they were alive or dead. Fortunes hung in the balance in some cases, a piece of knowing what had happened to a loved one and others. Far too often I saw faded and smudged images standing behind the somber-faced royalty, posing for the camera. I knew those hazy figures for what they really were, ghosts. The men and women and children in those pictures would never be found. Knowing their fate, being certain while the rest of the world wondered and waited, gave me nightmares. Each dream held the feeling of truth, not imagination, a glimpse into secrets and things I couldn't possibly know that the details of what I dreamed didn't carry over into my waking hours was both a blessing and a curse. Not remembering let me hope the dreams would stop. The ghost gazing at me from my dressing table mirror was real enough. She looked to have been no more than 20 or 22. Chestnut haired with dark blue eyes and delicate features. Her skin was fair, making the roses in her cheeks all the brighter. I thought her pretty, but not a great beauty. She clutched a folded fan in one gloved hand and stared at me intently, as aware of me as I was of her. Judging solely by her beaded white silk dress, the tiara in her hair, and the strand of pearls at her throat, I guess she'd been a member of royalty in life. I didn't remember her photographs in the papers, but that didn't mean she hadn't been amongst the missing. I slipped the last hairpin into the twisted knot of hair at the nape of my neck, never taking my eyes from the ghost. She still appeared solid and lifelike, no doubt recently dead, mourned and missed by someone who'd loved her. This ghost had died on the other side of the world, yet she sought me out and managed to cross my boundaries. That said a great deal about her determination. I feared it might say even more about the circumstances of her death. Those who died a horrible death made the most stubborn ghosts. She taught me if given half an opportunity, but I didn't intend to give her one. I pulled my words tighter, doing all I could to shut her out of my house, my life. You can't linger here, spirit, and I can't help you. Whatever you're looking for is far away. Leave this place and seek your rest. The ghost stood fast, her gaze never wavering from my reflection in the mirror. I'd expected the anger common in strong spirits to fill her eyes, or a demand for me to bow to her will. What I saw instead was patience and a willingness to wait. I had no idea what she would wait it for. Celia? Gabe's image appeared in the mirror near the ghost, startling me. My husband couldn't see her, that was plain, but I'd no doubt from the way the ghost moved to one side that she was aware of him. Are you ready to leave? We're supposed to pick up Jack and Sadie and the children in half an hour. I'm ready. The ghost was gone between one instant and the next, leaving me with a racing heart and a catch in my throat. I tucked a stray strand of hair behind my ear, staring at the emptiness where she'd stood. She'd gone because she chose to leave, not because I'd sent her away. I just need to get my hat. Gay put his hands on my shoulders, worry in his eyes. You're very pale, Dee. Are you all right? I'm fine. The ghost took me by surprise, but she's gone now. His frown deepened. He'd watched me deal with ghosts of all kinds for more than four years becoming more sure of my abilities as I gained experience and knowledge. Isadora Bobbitt, a master practitioner of spiritual arts, was my teacher and mentor, and a good friend of both me and Gabe. Before she took me on as a student, I was awash in a world I didn't understand. Without Dora's guidance, I might have gone mad. Spirits and haunts seldom surprised me now, a fact Gabe was quite aware of. I covered his hand with mine and smiled. Truly, I'm fine. We should get going. Sadie's more excited about going to the parade than Stella. 
She'll be very cross if we keep her waiting. As long as you're sure everything's all right. Gabe kissed me on the cheek. I'll pull the car out, meet you at the end of the drive. I hadn't lied. Everything was fine. Still, I avoided looking at the mirror. If she'd come back, I didn't want to know. There'd be time enough to deal with stubborn ghosts later. <laughs> 